what's up everyone and welcome to my incredibly late review for Beyond Two Souls. I've been really busy in the last couple weeks and there's a bunch of brand new games coming out including the PS4 and Xbox One that are coming out in a couple weeks so I have to do more reviews like this because you know the other ones take way longer than these to make so you know Sorry, but these are going to be good reviews, okay? So Beyond Two Souls, of course, is from the makers of Heavy Rain and Indigo Prophecy, two of my favorite story-driven games that came out in the last few years. I really like both of those games, so I was very much looking forward to Beyond Two Souls, especially since it has Ellen Page and one of my favorite actors, Willem Dafoe. So what did I think of Beyond Two Souls? Well, let's talk about the story. The story for Beyond Two Souls follows Ellen Page's character Jody Holmes, who ever since she was a young girl, she had this entity called Aiden attached to her, which no one knows what this is, but it might be a demon, it might be a ghost, but whenever uh, Jody's in, in trouble, Aiden intervenes and screws everything up. So we follow her through multiple stages of her life, from you know uh, childhood to pre-teenage to teenage years to adulthood, and we follow her through all these stages of her life. Bad things happen a lot. She joins the CIA. She has to go and stop uh, multiple things. There's a whole infra world, which it might be the place where Aiden came from, and there's spirits everywhere screwing stuff up, and the story just goes all over the place, and, and the story is nuts. It just never stops, and what really makes it worse is that the movie, the story isn't really connected from, you know, childhood to adulthood, and that's how it ends. No, in the beginning it starts with adulthood, then it goes to childhood, then it goes to preteen, then it goes to teen, then it goes back to adult, then it goes back to childhood, then it goes to preteen. It's just all jumbled up, and it makes the storytelling not hard to understand, but it's just like, oh, I want to see what happens next. You'll have to wait two hours after we show you all this other stuff, and it, it just becomes a little bit too jarring at times. There's just points in this game I don't understand why they were there. Like, there's a whole point in Navajo that I don't understand why that was there. It was just silly, and that's the point. There's just so many silly moments in this very jumbled up mess of a story. It's just crazy, but the thing is, it's very enjoyable. The story itself, even when it's silly, is very enjoyable. But what really does save the story for me is that at times it's very interesting. The mystery behind Aiden, you don't know who that is. And of course, Jodie Holmes is a very likable character, very likable heroine in this movie, in this game. I keep saying movie, but this game, she's a very likable character. And Ellen Page does a damn good job acting in this. I mean, she's really good in this. You really do root for her. You love her all the way from the beginning to the end. Even if it's a jumbled story, you really like her. And of course, Willem Dafoe's in there who plays a researcher who's kind of like her father figure. And she's, I mean, he's really good as well. And everybody else is great as well. The dialogue isn't the best, but the acting itself is very well done. Now the sound in this game, I already mentioned the acting being fantastic, but I did not mention that this is probably Ellen Page's best performance, and I really thought she was going to kind of phone it in in this game, but she didn't. She gave it her all, and she is fantastic in this game. You really like her character, you really like her, like I said before, but she is really just so good in this. Everybody else is great as well. Uh, the sound design is really good. It's exactly what you would expect from a AAA Sony title like this. Uh, everything sounds great. Explosions sound great. You know, the wind passing by. Everything in the environment sounds great. Uh, the soundtrack itself is filled with orchestra, and whenever, you know, there's a sad moment, the orchestra is very sad. When it's very energetic, it's very energetic. And the soundtrack definitely helps the, the mood of the story or the gameplay. It, it works. It, it, it's a really good sound overall. So there you go. The sound here is great. Now let's talk about the graphics for Beyond Two Souls, which is probably, actually undeniably, the best thing about this game. Wow, Sony, what a great idea. You released a game that looked like it could be for PS4 on PS3 a little over a month before the PS4 actually came out. That's actually a great way to lead into the PS4 because this game is probably the last exclusive that's only going to be on PlayStation 3, and it looks absolutely phenomenal and it, it might even be the best looking game on PS3. One of the best looking games I've ever seen. When it gets to the characters, everybody looks exactly like their actors. To the, even the smallest details on Willem Dafoe's face with his like mole and stuff. Everything looks exactly the same. Every single thing. Ellen Page, there's a point in this game where you get to see a close up of her face and it's covered in dirt and scratches and bruises and her hair is all you know messed up and it looks so good. 
And what's the, the best part about that is that you, you would see that in CG. And if you saw that in CG, you'd probably be like, whoa, that looks amazing. But that's not CG. That is gameplay. You get to play that. You get to move around as her. And that is so impressive. And what I really love about this game and why it looks way better than Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain, the character models look great, they still do, but the environments are very lackluster. Here, every single thing, every object is detailed perfectly, every texture is amazing. I didn't see one texture like uh, pop in or anything, there's no frame rate chugging. I just thought it was an amazing looking game all the way through. It is one of the best looking games this year. So even if, well actually it probably is the best looking game this year. So even if the gameplay or the story might suck, the gameplay, I mean the graphics are great. So there you go, the graphics are amazing. Now the gameplay for Beyond Two Souls, I'm gonna give it credit here. It actually tried to become more of a game than Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain, you moved around, you looked at stuff until something happens, and then of course you had to press some buttons to get out of a sticky situation. And here they actually try to expand it and become more of a video game at you know sections. But there is a lot of times where it's very linear and you have to go point A to point B and then you, you might be in a sticky situation you have to press a couple buttons to get out of the sticky situation and then you go on to the next part of the story. It's still pretty much the same except it actually expands as a game. It actually tries to open up. There's actually sequences where you have to do stealth in this game which is, I'm going to be honest with you, terrible. Whenever there's a sequence where you have to do stealth it's the dumbest thing. It really is. And then you had to start the mission over pretty much. It's so dumb. It, it, it tried to become too much of a game at times. But I do appreciate it that it was actually trying to become a video game. I do appreciate that. But it just didn't work. Besides more of those gamey moments where there's stealth or you even have to shoot some people sometimes. For the most part, it's exactly like Heavy Rain where you have to, you know, press buttons to get out of a situation or whatnot. But... This is my major problem with this. Heavy Rain, when you screwed up a couple button presses or a bunch of them, there was consequence. Your character could die and you can never play that character again unless you play the game over. In this game, when you screw something up, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. The story will continue. Everything will be exactly the same. There might be a moment where Ellen Page goes, ow, I got hurt, but it doesn't matter. You keep going. And I screwed up plenty of times and nothing really happened. There was no difference in the story. And I read everywhere, just in case maybe there was differences I didn't notice. No, there's no differences. There's really no consequence in this game. And that kind of brought it down. The gameplay, when it was intense in Heavy Rain because you don't want to screw up because you might die, in this game, it didn't really matter. I was like, oh, I missed it. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's not like I'm going to get a, a freaking a gold trophy for this. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. There's no consequence. And that is a main problem with the gameplay. Now, luckily, there is a little bit more to the gameplay. You get to play as Aiden, which is, of course, the entity that follows Jody around. And when you get to play as Aiden, whenever there was a sequence where you had to mess some people up or scare some people by moving objects as Aiden, because, of course, he's a ghost that floats around, those moments are awesome. I loved playing as Aiden. Even though, at times, it's a little hard to control and sometimes it's a little confusing because he floats around a lot, I still very much enjoy playing as Aiden. I wish there was more sequences where I could screw around with people and move objects and terrorize people with Aiden. That would have been awesome. But no, there's a lot of sequences where you're Jody and you have to punch people and stuff. And that sucks. And you have to do stealth stuff. That sucks. But Aiden, when you're playing as Aiden, it's very, very enjoyable. So I really like that. So overall... Beyond Two Souls is a mixed bag, but I still ended up really enjoying it. Even though the story was a mess and at times was very silly, it was still enjoyable because the main characters were really likable. The sound is really good, the graphics are fantastic, and even though the gameplay is a very mixed bag, it still wasn't terrible. It wasn't like it was a chore to get through. I was just upset that there really wasn't any choices in the game, besides the end where you can choose either ending A or ending B. That's it. That's the choice you get. So overall, I enjoyed this game. I did. But I did not love it as much as I thought I was going to. So there you go. Beyond Two Souls, there's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and goodbye. Tell them to leave me the fuck alone. Because next time, I'll kill everyone.